chapter 2 now. So we'll read these three verses. And we'll get into this now. This, this is uh, kind of where we're at. You know, we're right here. Getting there near the end. And... Uh, So that's why we're in these books right now. Because I knew this would be just so appropriate for the day we're living in. Amen. What's all going on? And look how relative it is. You got Mr. Rockefeller paying millions of dollars. Got a couple of these evangelical Chinese preachers in that in California. Hitting the road full time for him, trying to get more churches to register, more churches to register. See, there's not enough of under under their control. And Rockefeller and his uh, after party project is now got these Judases out here being paid to go out here and get more churches to register with the government, so that they can be under their control. For all the things they got planned come 2030, mm -hmm. just six years from now. Think about it. They want a lot of it to be in fact by next year, 25. So things are moving, buddy, in the right direction. Hallelujah. <laughs> so let's stay in our respect to the Word of God and read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Mm -hmm. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, by our gathering together unto him. Amen. See, we've got two immutable truths there. Mm -hmm. These two things are going to happen. Yes. Amen, brother. Amen. Mm -hmm. And there's two things. Mm -hmm. Christ is coming back to set up his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a rapture Amen. of him gathering us to himself. Mm -hmm. And as sure as those things are sure, well that ye be not soon shaken. See? Mm -hmm. So don't get nervous about it. Don't get shook up about it. Don't hear some screwball saying something stupid. Mm -hmm. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit mm -hmm. nor by word nor by letter as from us. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, oh, I found a new letter nobody ever found till now. Paul wrote it. Yeah, don't believe these idiots. I found a guy like that on the computer this week. And he's trying to teach people, I'm the only one teaching it right. The real word here in the, in the Greek. And, and I'm uh, it's surprising these churches never taught it right. But you listen to me, I'll set you right. Buy my new version, you know. I mean, here we go again. Oh, it's just amazing to think that the suckers are still born, uh, you know, every minute. Be ye not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Mm -hmm. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. All right, so let's pray. Father, thank you so much that we have an absolute word that speaks to us absolutely because you're an absolute God. And what's right is right. There's a heaven and there's a hell. So help us to stand for you and the truth of heaven and not compromise and not quit. And in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 So what it is, even you notice me writing, you know, I'd seen another little note I wanted to write myself uh, of something I've said even last, in the last few weeks uh, because uh, of what we're going to read today, what we have already read even in this text. He said, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. See, notice how that was the first thing he mentioned. Right. And that's why I said back there in Psalms 1913 that I thought that's the great transgression. Remember when I said, what is the great transgression? Oh, yeah. What is the great transgression? 
And I said, to me, it's apostasy. Mm -hmm. Somebody that once had a standing for and in the truth, but then they turned their back on that. Mm -hmm. To me, that is the greatest travesty. And of course, mm -hmm. it's kind of being reinforced here a little bit because Paul says, now don't you be shaken. Right. But the truth is a whole lot of people are going to be shaken and a whole lot of people are going to fall away first. You're going to know when this day's coming because first you're going to see a whole lot of people that leave a good, solid King James position. Mm -hmm. yep. And they're going to leave and become Catholics and become something else or, and totally quit the faith and yep. pick up the perverted versions. And uh, then the man of sin will be revealed. Now, it's believed that he's even born and, and running around today. A JPL. Anybody knows anything about JPL and the uh, jet propulsion uh, out in California? Those people who were part of working with Area 51 and alien technologies. And, and JPL is the names of the, the letters of the guy's name that ran the thing, and yet he was in cahoots, cahoots with other Satanists. And they said that we finally made contact when we, we kept having a big celebration every year, October 31st, trying to. Eat, eat babies and drink their blood and try, finally get a child born that would be of the seed of Satan and we finally we accomplished that he said we accomplished that uh, their dream of finally bringing in some child in the world by Satan to be the Satan's child himself well you start calculating that time and it'd be somebody about my age technically and uh, but we don't know who he is because he's not been revealed to the world yet see But it's coming like a freight train. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's coming like a freight train. So we see the day of Christ. It's coming. Now, first of all, let's remind ourselves. As you know, we are big on having a chart and uh, coming like a freight train. Yeah, I hear it out there. Yep. <laughs> Brenda caught it. <laughs> so, of course, we have this chart. And now... Uh, you know, this is supposed to be Larkin's chart, basically, but somebody colorized it. It's nice, you know, it looks pretty. We want to be attractive. And, uh, but the only problem with this chart is, see, they're just showing you these seven dispensations. Because, you know, they're making a simple seven-point sermon. A chart on the course of time from eternity to eternity. But notice how it says, here's the first dispensation. Second dispensation, third but the truth is, uh, again, see, he's got the seventh one being uh, the new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. Okay, well then. Sorry to bother you, but I'm going to take off. Can you make sure you lock the door when y'all leave? Oh, of course, yeah. Thank you so very much. Yeah, no problem. Have a great day. So anyhow, if it's new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, don't you think that ought to be a new beginning? Right, right. See, technically, that's the eighth dispensation. Mm -hmm. Whoever read this chart have it as a seventh, but no. See, they left out this first one here. See, they got from uh, Adam to Noah, but no, it starts out at first. Starts out with it with an age of innocence. Man was born in a garden, running around naked, you know, in innocence. Then he sinned. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, so if we so that's why really the new heaven, new earth. That's the eighth dispensation. They just forgot to make that the first one. Uh, but there's a total of eight dispensations. Okay, now where are we now? There's Jesus when he died on the cross, right? Then there's the church age. There's a church age. And at some point, finally, boom, there's going to be the rapture of the Lord's church. And it's going to take place there. And then though it's going to be all of a sudden seven years of hell on earth. And so after we would go up to be the Lord in glory for seven years, then we come down with him. And then he sets up his millennial kingdom for 1,000 years. Then at the end of that, there's a battle of Gog and Magog. At the end of the seven years, there's the battle of Armageddon. 
At the end of the millennial reign, then there's a the battle of Gog and Magog. Right. Where Jesus calls down fire on his enemies that surrounded Jerusalem. Right. So again, just to help everybody get it, what we're talking about, and not to get all this confused, because a lot of people have it confused, oh, yeah. that the Lord has established His church. He's established His seven churches too. There's a church just like the church at Ephesus. There's a church just like Smyrna. There's a church just like Pergamos. There's a church just like Thyatira. There's just a church like Sardis. And there's a church like Philadelphia. And there's a church like Laodicea. In America today. And in the world today. But praise the Lord. Soon, all of God's children in His church is going to be raptured out of here. Because He's going to come in this cloud just like He said He would in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4. And the body will be changed in a moment, twinkling of an eye. The dead in Christ will rise first and we which are alive will be changed in the moment, twinkling of an eye, fly out of here. And we're all going to leave, just like Superman. We're going to fly out of here. The dead people come up out of the ground. They'll leave a hole where they come out. Just like Jesus was visibly, physically out of that tomb. He left his grave clothes behind. Mm -hmm. He come out of there. And we're leaving here. We're going to leave our clothes and blood behind too. We'll be out of here. But you can see how if he took us out of here right now, and then this country was in a, a time of chaos, a civil war, all the electrics out, and somebody come in the room, and then they'd say all this blood and clothes. They'd say, oh no, somebody must have really died here. Look at all that blood and stuff. Quick, get, get their Bibles. Yeah, you're going to need them. You better grab them Bibles and guns, yeah. whatever you find in there, because you're going to need them, because it's going to be seven years of hell on earth. Yeah. And you got to be a survivalist to survive it. And it's going to get rough. Be, the government's going to be running around chopping people's heads off that won't join their new world order. Mm -hmm. And that's why Rockefeller's paying millions of dollars to try to get all the churches under their control now, like I said. So we don't need to get things confused. Now we beseech your brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him, because He is coming back and we are going to be going to be gathered out with Him. He's going to call us out of this world and we're going to be with Him there in heaven for those seven years when the seven sealed book is open and all those seven years of hell on earth happens to the people on this earth. And then we'll be riding the horses with Him. So that's why we started with the first slide that we had. Amen? See, He's going to be coming back but He'll be opening His mouth and out of His mouth will be a sword. Now this artist took a little artistic liberty and has Jesus shooting a bow. Well, the book of Psalms talks about his arrows. So God's got his words. Some of them are like missiles and arrows. You know, they pierce people's hearts. But believe you me, when he opens that mouth, man, and that word of God goes out of there, all of a sudden everybody's turned to blood and fire. The Bible says they're standing there and all of a sudden their eye sockets are consumed away with fire before they even fall on the ground. Like we read in the Minor Prophets there. Mm -hmm. It's going to be quite a day of reckoning for the people of earth because this is Jesus coming back to the earth to rule earth, the earth for a thousand years. So it's actually his second advent. He came once, that was the first advent. Mm -hmm. He's coming again, it'll be his second advent. But this time, instead of being here 33 years, he's going to stay for a whole millennial reign, a whole thousand years. But seven years before that is what the Bible refers to and that we're looking at here. How that seven year tribulation period is divided up into three and a half and three and a half. Mm -hmm. So the church has been here since Jesus died for the church. And he loved the church, gave himself for it. Amen. So we're here, what, 2024 at least. Mm -hmm. Very soon, we're leaving here. To go be with him in the air. But the, and the Bible saying, but don't you get too shook up about when Jesus comes and sets up his kingdom and he's ruling the world and it's the day of Christ. Because there's going to be some things happening first. 
Before you get to Revelation 19, you've got to get back up and go through chapters 4, 5, 6. It takes a while to get to 8, 19, amen? And right. so, And so that's what he's going to get into. And that's what we're going to get into here in the book of 2 Thessalonians. Obviously, some people are going around teaching a bunch of garbage. So Paul had to come along and say, no, these guys telling you, oh no, Jesus has already come, and oh no, he's not coming back. Don't you listen to these false teachers. They're everywhere. There's going to be a lot more of them first over. There'll be a whole lot more antichrists. Even John will warn you there'll be many antichrists. You get, if you have a computer and start looking up about Jesus, you'll find a lot of antichrists on, in, in, on the YouTube. Amen? Right. But that's not it. Okay, I got the wrong controller. That's the thing. It's on the TV. Is that where I put it? Okay. Thank you. Yep. So here we go. Guard against being shaken or alarmed by the day of Christ. Amen. Be ye not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit. Now, I think it's interesting. He's saying you could get troubled in your mind. You could get troubled in your life. You could get emotional. Amen. People get emotional about goofy stuff nowadays, especially. People get emotional, man. They're ready to shoot you and kill you just because you're not the right skin color. If you cut them off, drive them down the road. It's get, we're get living in a crazy day here in America. And Paul says, Be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit. Now, I think it's fascinating because, again, people today are more interested in spirits. You watch these ghost shows on TV. Right. Many people are addicted yeah. to them things. That's they right. can't quit watching them. Right. And it can be fascinating. I guarantee it can be fascinating because the spirit world is real. Yeah. And they can make a physical appearance. They can show up. They can do stuff. And scare you to death if you ain't careful. That's right. That's right, bro. It's real. Mm -hmm. But don't let it bother you. Right. I've told you how I went to the singing in the Smokies. And so here we are, a big Greyhound bus load of Christian people out of Kentucky. Two of us, really, two buses loads. We're going down and singing in the Smokies, hearing inspiration and all these great, you know, gospel quartet song uh, singers singing their songs and stuff. And it, it was a great time. We really had a good time because we spent the night down there and they fed us good. But uh, right now, I'm at this Methodist man, lived in the area, and we were visiting and talking. And he's telling me, you know, how he owns several homes. And I don't know, somehow or another, something was said, I, I probably said something about Ouija boards and people being superstitious, and he took offense to it right away. He's offended at me. He didn't like me speaking negative of the Ouija board. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what's wrong with you? Why would you think this Ouija boards are okay for Christians? And he told me how, because he proceeded, him and his wife were playing with the Ouija board, and it said, go to the, your rental house and look underneath the third stair and you find all kinds of gold money and, and silver, and sure enough. So he did what it told him. So he says, God's in the Ouija. Oh. God gave us a Bible and a Ouija God board. <laughs> God gave us a Bible and the Ouija board. Yeah. And, the, and he was sold because he, he got money out of it. Exactly. And that's exactly what's wrong with everybody today. Everybody thinks because there's money in it, God's in it, because there's money in it. Right. And the money says right on it, and God do we trust, so it must be okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> they figure God's got to be in it if there's a buck in it, amen? But no, that ain't it. But yet Paul's warning us that in these last days that we're living in, don't you get shook or shaken or troubled by spirit nor by word. Mm -hmm. Again, and everybody's got some fit word to tell you. You know, you got all these women preachers on the TV just giving you the word. They thought we're giving you the word. You know, oh, the bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. Yeah, <laughs> it's all the word, the word, the word. You know, right. even even uh, Mr. Peterson, who doesn't claim to be a Christian, uh, wants to talk about the logos and the word. You know. Mm -hmm. He's making a lot of money going through the Bible and tell, teaching on the Bible, but yet he ain't even a believer himself. Didn't claim to be. But yet, 
And yet, when you analyze what he says, and that's why it's in our newsletter, and that's why we put him in there on occasion, because he does say some good things, but yet at the same time, you have to be honest, uh, he's not a believer. Right. Uh, he's hoping that his good works and living as a good Catholic would live, saying that he acknowledges God and he's a philosopher and he follows truth. He wants to say, I follow truth, I'm okay, you're okay, we're all okay if we follow truth. No, that's not it either. Because you haven't let Jesus set you free. And he said he's the truth. And you've got to believe on him as your savior. You've got to let him make you free. So don't be troubled. Don't be soon shaken. As by spirit, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. And this is what's so sad. Again, we live in a day where everybody's got their perverted uh, ISV, ESV. Pick your, pick your letters, you know. They want you to buy their new, 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 newest version, you know. They can't stick with what's tried and true. What's, what, what your grandma and grandpa use has to be okay for you. You know, they, no, no, you got to get their new, 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 newest piece of garbage. Because Jesus never had it right till right here just before he comes back. Now, don't that make a lot of sense? No sense at all. And so, nor by letter. And of course, the sad truth is we're saying that by, you know, when you get up to about 90 AD, by this time, you know, people are even writing fake letters and putting Paul, Apostle Paul's name on it. Maybe you get some letter from me saying, oh, I repudiate everything I said before. This is the new way to go. You got to have the new, new, newest Paul version here. See, even that by itself, that's enough right there. You should know the new versions are pieces of garbage. Because Paul said this would be the common thing going, but don't you get carried away with it. And that's exactly where we're at, isn't it? Yes. As that, now here he nails it. As that day of Christ is at hand. Now, only the King James Bible says that the day of Christ is at hand. Only the King James Bible says that. All the other versions say, as the day of the Lord is at hand. See, they're wanting to teach you. They're putting in their Bibles what they're wanting you to believe. See, you never do that. You don't put into the Bible, force it to say something that you want it to say. But this is what's wrong with the perverted new versions. They put in it like the ESV, written by one man, and he wrote that whole Bible to be true of Calvinism. That God picks some for heaven and some for hell. So everybody loves it. I sat next to a lady when we got her hair cut. And she's a good Christian lady. She goes to this church in Flat Rock. Uh, Baptist church and she was bragging on it being a Baptist church but I said well what Bible do you use she said ESV mm. that told me all I need to know mm. told me her by her pastor is a Calvinist mm. he believes God's picked some for heaven and some for hell mm -hmm. now he can get up and teach you know you got to be born again you got to be saved because yeah God's going to make sure his chosen ones want to get saved because right. mm -hmm. that's what the ESV is all about. Mm -hmm. That's what it was print, printed for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's and it came out, and it's Wheaton College that's pushed it. So, that of course, a lot of Baptists use the ESV. But it's only written by one man and his son. Perverted piece of garbage. It's written with an agenda. Mm -hmm. But see, they're trying to teach what they want to teach. They don't want you to believe that there's going to be this rapture then. After the rapture, seven years later, Jesus finally comes down and we run the world with Jesus for a thousand years. They want you to stay totally confused on this subject. Maybe there ain't no rapture till the middle of the tribulation. Maybe there's no rapture at all till the end of the tribulation. This is what many people do teach on the computer, especially mm -hmm. on YouTube and stuff. But for sure, he said, what is the first thing we need to be aware of? Don't be soon shaken in mind or by, be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you. Now there it is. 
People are out to trick people. Yep. So they're writing all these books, and many of our friends even have been hoodwinked by other people. And they don't know these simple truths that I've just told you even this morning. Let no man deceive you by any means, see? They'll try to love you into their way of believing. They'll get their girls to want to marry your boys and verse vice. They'll do anything they can to try to get you away from this simple truth of the King James Bible. But don't let them deceive you. Don't let them trick you. And this is what is typical of these last days, this Laodicean church age. For that day shall not come. Talking about when Jesus comes back and sets up his kingdom in the world. Yeah, what about that second advent when he finally gets back here? With me and you reigning and ruling with him, us riding them white horses with him on the, and taking over the world. That day can't come first except the book of Revelation take place. And so, except there come a falling away first. So the very first thing that's going to be an evidence that Jesus is going to come back and rule the world and us with him is the fact that there's a falling away. And we see that today. There's a falling away in our hairstyles. There's a falling away in our clothes we wear. There's a falling away. There's a falling away from the book. Hey, give me anything. Give me your preference. Give me your preference. I'll have to give you my preference, but don't tell me it's only the King James 1611. Oh, I just love... What did the one clown say that used to come to this church that we all thought so well of and the people around the world thought so well of? Brother Dan, you talk too much about the King James Bible. Ha ha! Don't forget it either. You know what that bird did? He fell away. Yeah. Right. Everybody was amazed. This guy was so good. They thought he was really a great example of what a missionary is supposed to be. I've heard his praise his sung from one end of the country to the other. And yet, what did he turn out to be? Almost like the Gromans clowns all of a sudden saying, oh, you got to speak in tongues or you ain't got the Holy Ghost. And then pretty soon, you know, other things, we begin to realize, man, these people... Well, they used to be so straight, but they fell away. Right. Yeah. They found it more convenient to go into this United Pentecostal denomination because there's a lot of money there. And I believe they're really saved, right. but because they fell away, poor old Steve, he sure been through his stuff, ain't he? Mm -hmm. It comes with a cost, brother. And so, that day of the Lord's coming, but it will not come unless, first of all, there's a falling away. Right. People falling away. They once held and believed the truth. Now, falling away refers to an apostasy. Yeah. So that's why we said here, guard against being shaken or alarmed by the day of Christ. Look for the coming of the Lord, not the judgment of His day. And let nothing shake or alarm you about that day he is coming back and he's going to call us to him first but when it comes to that actual day and that arrival of that day let no man deceive you two events will happen first a great falling away now a rebellion an apostasy yeah that's what this falling away is referring to the word apostasy means to fall away from a standing position. It's throughout the Bible. The Bible warns us against knowing the truth and not doing it and end up doing just the opposite of what we once espoused to do that was the truth. Now this is throughout the Bible. Now let's turn to Ezekiel. Now in Ezekiel you've got this beautiful book that tells you in an Old Testament sense how to be saved and how to stay saved. Because in the Old Testament, you could be saved and lose your salvation. Right. And the book of Ezekiel lays it out perfectly clear how that if you die having fell away from the truth, then you're not going to get to go to paradise. you got to die right or else you will not go. 
And this is borne out in the book of Ezekiel. See, the, what's the key to salvation? In one word and in one verse, it's Romans chapter 8, he that has not the Spirit of God, he's none of his. you got to have the Spirit of God if you want to go to heaven. Old Testament, New Testament, any Testament you want. Mm -hmm. If you ain't got the Spirit of God, you're not going to heaven. It's the only way you can go. You're either godly or ungodly. And in the Old Testament, they can have the Spirit of God and lose it. But in this New Testament, we got the Spirit of God and we can't lose it. If we wanted to, we can't lose it. And so, here's what the Bible warns us about then. We see here in chapter 33, notice what it says in verse 30. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. So see, they're talking against the preacher. They're talking about brother Ezekiel. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. What a beautiful example. They will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Again, I've got, I could name names of so many young Timothys I've had in my ministry in my lifetime that they started out right. They started out about a, a part of the King James 1611 group wearing t-shirts on campus at Baptist Bible College when it used to be in existence. <laughs> when it used to be, but it's fallen away. And it ain't there no more. And these friends of mine, they're not there no more. But they're sitting fat cat in it with their money in and their mansions. Mm -hmm. They got lots of money and they keep writing books and they're applauded by the world. Yep. But they don't believe the book. They left the book a long time ago. With their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after covetousness. And lo, and that's usually the bottom line. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. And that's how you look in your family. That's how I look in my family. There are people in our families, they've rejected God's truth, but yet they see us as entertaining and entertainment. Oh, I read very lovely. Yeah. <laughs> see? Mm -hmm. And if you were to press them, they'd even say, well, man, I've known a lot of hypocrites, but no, that's one person I can honestly tell you I know. Yeah, but what happened to you? You. Yeah. Right. You know, when we street preach, we know a lot of these people, they've got an aunt or an uncle or someone that's, that's right. a true that's right. Christian. And we're not asking them to be like all the hypocrites they know. <laughs> we're asking them to be like that true one of grandma or right. grandpa or aunt or uncle that really love God. You can be like that if you trust right. the Lord and believe the book. Right. Right. And we get out there and preach to them. They listen a little bit and be a little bit respectful. But the truth is, no, they won't, they're not willing to pay, to, to pay the price. There's a price of being a Christian. They don't want to pay it. Right. It might cost them something because yep. they live by their covetousness. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with your sold out preachers and mm -hmm. missionaries and denominationalists. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4. Here Paul warns us that yes, in these last days, like he told Timothy, what's the watchword of the hour? Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 4 verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will lean towards whoever wants to tickle their ears, just like your kitty cat. My kitty cat loves me to tickle her ears. <laughs> Amen? Do, yeah. You rub around underneath her ears, you know. And, oh, they love it. That's right. <laughs> For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap, they heap to themselves, 
teachers having itching ears. That's why they like that woman preacher on the TV. That's why they like certain apostates that we can't stand <laughs> and listen to them. That's why they like Joel Osteen and his prosperity gospel and his big smile. They're living by their lust and they're told they can do that because it's all the grace of God. We can live any way we want to. We're all saved by grace. There's no law to it. There's no New Testament law. There's no Old Testament law. That's called antinomianism by the Catholics for a reason. They don't see the New Testament laws written in the New Testament for the New Testament church. But they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they turn away their ears from the truth. And so this is why this is a major number one sign that, wow. Now we couldn't have read this 20 years ago or even 50 years ago and been as right as we are today. <laughs> I'm saying we're really right today. Right. And just about the time we're saying, well, wait, maybe the, the new Bible guys are right. Then God lets a little just a little uh, uh, Brandon Peterson come along and say, man, look at how using this computer, man, and God's numbers in the Bible. God's all over King James Bible. And he's right. God is all over King James Amen. Bible. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, the ark, we all know God, God's ark's been on there, right? just like the Bible says it's been for, for centuries. And yet people are going over there, and even Ron Wyatt found something that looks like a shape of a boat. And again, you got to remember, for, for even Noah to build an ark, well, obviously he knew what boats were, because they had boats back in the Bible days. Right. He wasn't the first one to invent a boat. boat. Right. But again, he was told to build it real big because <laughs> he's going to have a lot of animals in it. Well, sure enough, they, duck, they got down there because, you know, especially now with global warming, if you believe it's real, of course, in the glacier should be melted some. You should be able to get down in there. Well, they got down in the old ark. Sure enough, they get down there. And of course, we have in our newsletter a link to a guy. And this is a, a real, you can tell this guy's a real... Uh, archaeologists and geologists and all those things because he talks, and he's, I mean, you can tell he's a PhD and he knows his stuff because he's talking about how well, in, even in archaeology, you know, we set up for, we set up hypotheses and we put them to the test and so he names all this. If this old building we find up here in the glacial ice on Ararat, if it wasn't an ark, then where's the main living room? Uh, where's their bathrooms? Where's their uh, gods that they would be worshiping and the idols and stuff uh, back in them days and stuff and they, there's nothing like that in the ark you know what they find in the ark mostly feces <laughs> they find snake skins where they shed their skins because you know it's dark a whole year most of the animals were asleep but they find a lot of seeds where they were feeding the animals they put a lot of they had granaries they had a, and they find the, they found the granaries too there's, in the ark there's granaries and uh, it's uh, made a certain way so that it would keep the, the grain from rotting and uh, so it would stay dry in there and any moisture get in it, it would head for the walls and be in the walls and it wouldn't get into the grain. And it's beautiful what they found there. I mean, they found it. It's there. Clears the nose on your face. They even found a place where I, Shim, Ham, J. Fifth, somebody, whoever was working that into the ark, I guess, he could, he could stay back in there and just sleep right there and they found it up against the wall how they had a bunk there you know there's not any tables and chairs because in a boat they would be sliding all over no it's all built in the beds built into the shelf where you just lay up against there you know and it's just beautiful it's all right there and it's so amazing to think that thing's been up there man that thing has been there what at least uh what About five or six thousand years you know and they can tell because, you know, when it gets thawing in the summertime, of course, then a lot of that ends up kind of rotting away. But yet, and but what were the boards made of? Gopher wood? Well, what's gopher wood? It's, it's cypress wood. Because as soon as you cut cypress wood, guess what? It immediately starts oozing with sap. And, of course, sap has a tendency to make things what? Waterproof. Never mind, they eventually, even on the outside, put pitch. bitumen and pitch, which is a form of tar. 
And they did. Put that on the outside of it. But, I mean, it's so beautiful because it, it's found way up here in Mount Air, right where it's supposed to be found. And it's full of not anything but feces and some seeds where they were feeding the animals, of course. And it's so neat to think that, see, God really did destroy the world and save the whole world by Noah in the ark and the animals. And it's all right there. It's still there. And the people all live there know it. They've known it for centuries, of course. And pull pieces of the wood out and use it to put in their sheds and build it out of stuff they... They've used it for years, build their chicken houses out of it and everything. But the civilized world, the educated world, they have known this, but we've seen it with our satellites, we've seen it with our airplanes. One of our pilots was talking about how he flew around it and he saw it, took pictures of it. CIA's known about it, but of course they're going to keep it secret because they don't want us to see how beautiful they can take pictures of this stuff and you, it's so detailed because, you know, you know, they saw you when you was out there you know, walking around in the woods and look, hunting for deer and stuff, too. Right. You know, the, the, the eye in the sky is there. And it's watching all the time. And it's so exciting to think this. So now the Christians in China, China, you know, has finally got some money. Some of the people do. And a lot of the people are Christians. And so they've even had uh, groups that have gone over there and climbed down in. And they've been able to pay for it. And they made several videos. We put that on our site before and on our newsletter. But I've got a new newsletter reports where I've sent to Ed and he's going to put it in there how that yeah we've got some major archaeologists that have studied this thing and they say yeah, this is it of course this is it there's no way you can get around it Ron Wyatt, Wyatt found something over there and it's still there to this day and of course you can go there and they got restrooms and everything the government paid for it and it's cool you know that's cool but for sure you know it ain't it because there's rivets whatever that boat was it's made with rivets and, and I believe like Dr. Ruckman taught the one that was made by God, there wasn't a piece of there wasn't a piece of metal anywhere in it, because mm -hmm. uh, metal in the Bible is a picture of the Antichrist and the devil, so it was all put together with pegs, and uh, post and beams, mm -hmm. and that's one other thing this scientist went into. He said, "Look at this thing! Look at these massive! Look at these beautiful joints it's with joiners and and beams and pegs, and that's and that's how God would do it. It would be all wood." The whole ark is made of wood with the pitch and stuff like God said it would be. And so it's so neat to think, wow, see there, it's there. And it's, all, and it's been there for centuries and the ice has preserved it. And yet it's slowly, there was a big earthquake over there a few years back and it opened a big crevice and half of it's, half the ark has been launched way out over a cliff. And the ice and the glacier is pushing against it and now it's kind of busted up into three big pieces. But you can still see kind of the roof the, the, in the top because there's a vent. The Bible said that he was to make a vent in the top, a window in the top, so that they'd have air. And uh, and and you can there's pictures of it where you can make it out. That, yeah, it's it was still it's still there. <laughs> but it's seven thousand feet above sea level. I mean that's that's way up there. You know it's hard to breathe when you get up there that high mm -hmm. in the world today. And it's great to think, wow. See, God's Bible is being verified even by the fact that the ark's still around. Knowing <laughs> yeah. his boys ain't, but the ark's still there. Yeah. <sighs> Them big trees they cut for the wood for the ark. Man, they were massive. Mm -hmm. Sort of like you know, our redwood forest over in California. Because God wants to be found now and God wants to be a testimony to His truth of His Bible. Right. And you're stupid not to believe the Bible. They say you're not supposed to preach and use words like me, tired, stupid. And of course, I do that all the time. Because I'm just a simple country boy. And I just don't have much patience. Amen? <laughs> don't need much patience. Amen. You either believe God or you call Him a liar. I'm going to believe God. Let's all stand by our heads in prayer. Lord, thank you for these simple but great truths that, yes, the Bible is true. Jesus is coming right on schedule, and a whole lot of people are turning their backs on the Jesus of the Bible today. And people are living in their comfort and by their lust. They just want to sweep it all under the rug of grace. But, Father... We know that the Bible tells us that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's the first time grace is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And we are so thankful that we have God's riches at Christ's expense. Mm -hmm. That Jesus paid it all, all to him. Oh, sin has left the crimson stain, but 
He washed it white as snow. Thank you, Father. Help us to do what we can to communicate that truth to the people we're going to see today. And in Jesus' name we ask it. And amen.